data analysis. There's food over here. So we need to go for this fire. Yeah, feel free to grab something. Um, yeah, let me try it again. Yeah, I just had to exit it, I guess. All right, so we'll get to. Oh, I might be a little loud. Um, no, you're good. Okay. So we'll get to the Sasser here soon. This is kind of the last thing I was going to talk about is the Sasser, and that's kind of the meat of this presentation. But I want to talk a little bit, too, about how students are engaging with Piano Marble and how that differs if somebody has a teacher versus those, teach those students who don't have a teacher. Uh, evaluate how the students are improving. Does that look? It looks a little wavy or something. It's the screen. Oh, OK. All right, and then uh, just then we're going to go over just summarizing how we evaluate our exercises and lessons. Similar to what Aaron was saying about the Sasser, we also want to make sure the exercises are not more difficult than they should be, that there's not these bottlenecks where people are having a hard time getting past a certain lesson. And we'll talk about how that's done. And then, of course, review standard assessment of sight reading and, and uh, how we went about um, doing that. All right, so as far as student engagement, currently new students average around 120 exercises in the first month with Piano Marble, which is a ton. This is average. There's a lot of students who go above and beyond that. And in the first three months, for those who stay for those three months, right, it's for all people who have an account for those three months, um, they'll do 265 exercises or, or more on average, again, which is huge. In the first month, uh, students average an increase of three levels. So if it's a 1A, as Aaron mentioned, levels would be, so five, five levels would be like a 1A to a 2A, a full level increase. This is a 1A to 1D. When I say level here, this is really a sub-level. And in the first three months, uh, five levels. Students with teachers take fewer attempts to pass higher level exercises. That, I think, is important note. What that basically shows, and I'll show you kind of a graph here that demonstrates this, is as the exercises get more difficult, we find that students with teachers have, have the help to, to get past those difficult exercises, and they don't get stuck. And you'll see the, the students that don't have a teacher, they have a really hard time at like seven, eight, nine level or higher. You, they, they take a lot longer to get past those exercises. And those, teacher, those with teachers tend to complete more exercises after the first month and stay with Piano Marvel longer. And again, I'll show that in a moment, what that, kind of, what, what that kind of means. But for whatever reason, people who don't have a teacher, the first week or two, they actually outperform those with teachers. They kind of, they, they play a lot. They play a lot. And that is, after about two or three weeks, there's a huge steep decline. And those who don't have teachers often quit, or they play, they just don't play very often, um, which I think makes sense to all of you guys, right? I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're like, OK, New Year's resolution. I'm going to make this happen. And then two weeks later, they're like, yeah, I'm not even going to the gym anymore, which <laughs> And see the same thing. So all right, this is our average attempts to pass. Orange here is just those without a teacher. This is how many times it takes to, uh, to pass on like, that's a 4D. I know that's a little small, so I'm trying to point it out. A 6A. And they seem to really struggle with getting past those exercises. While with the teacher, it stays pretty steady, even for those higher levels, which I think is a big deal. That's where a lot of students are going to get frustrated and possibly quit. Um, when they feel like they're not progressing like they have in the past. And we want to see that a steady, uh, either be completely steady, which would be, which would be great, but more realistic is probably a, a small incline. And that's, a, that's far better than uh, you know, steep uh, increases where that, that frustration definitely sets in. And this is the number of exercises played. As I mentioned, orange is those without a teacher. So you see, on average, per week, how much they're how many exercises they're doing, and it steeply declines. Now, this is average. You'll see in a moment what our 75th percentile is, or our, you know, those who do more. Uh, so certainly, there's a lot of people dropping out, people who no longer subscribe. 
which is why that's a little bit lower. But you still see 15, 16 weeks out, they're still, on average, playing these exercises while those without teachers have, have quit a long time ago. All right, so 75th percentile, for those who maybe not as familiar with maybe percentiles or, or what I'll be talking about here, 50th percentile would be if we arranged it from zero exercises to the per person who perform or who plays the, the very most, the 50th percentile would be your, your middle person. And 75th percentile would be like two thirds mark. So it gives you a really good idea of those students who, who play quite a bit. No, they're not 90th percentiles. They're not people who, you know, you're one out of 10 students, but they're, uh, they play steadily, consistently. And we see that even 19, 20 weeks out, these people are playing 20, 30, 40 exercises a week, which is still quite decent. Yeah? Would you say that is um, in part that decline is because 1A, you can knock out 20 exercises in 10 minutes. Yeah. And then when you get into level three, it takes a, like a week to pass off a couple exercises? Yeah, absolutely. When first someone first starts, they probably also are going, sometimes, I expect, they go back to those other exercises that they know they can pass, but they like to see those, you know, that they've, they've got to pass, they like to, to score well on, on those kind of exercises. So now they're getting to an area where it's new to them. These are all new things. And yeah, makes it more difficult. So absolutely. And again, this does include those people who are dropping off, which there always are gonna be students who, who stop playing as often, and, and this includes them. So. All right, so the way that we evaluate our exercises to make sure that they do well is if we borrow a term from data science, we use certain features or uh, indicators that predict whether an exercise is, is more difficult than it should be or, more prob or is problematic. And some of those features include the number of attempts before pass. Not, it's just not on average, like a, a 14A we might expect takes more attempts to pass. But this is compared to its, its own bucket. So if a 14A exercise takes, on average, I don't know, five attempts to pass, we should see the other pieces in that same bucket around that same amount, generally. The next thing we look at is average score. The percent of instances the exercise was last played. What that means is that they play this exercise and then they, they quit. Uh, that could indicate some frustration. Usually that's extremely low, but it can indicate that something's going wrong. And then pass on first attempt. If the pass on first attempt is extremely low, again, that could indicate too high of difficulty. If it's extremely high, it could mean it's too easy. Sometimes that's not a bad thing, but this is, just helps us go, oh, here's 20 exercises. That may be a problem. Let's take a look. And of course, the goal is to detect potentially problematic exercises. So we want to get better and better at our prediction. And that's still in process. Hopefully, with a predictive model, kind of depends on the, the question. But usually, if you get a, a prediction model like 80, 90% accuracy, which means whenever those features go off and say, hey, there's a problem, 80% of the time or 90% of the time, there is an issue. And to detect bottlenecks, so we want to make sure that you know, they, they progress gradually as they, uh, as they go along the levels. And this is how we're doing it, is looking at some of those indicators. Are there anything that you guys have seen with Piano Marvel? Someone's, some, something that an exercise is too difficult or um, some frustration that maybe a student uh, brings up? Flashcards, yep. Yep, that's a pretty common one on every level. Right, flashcards kind of get get flagged as as being difficult for sure. Um, anything that might be an indicator that you guys have seen, do those make sense? Uh, number of attempts before pass. Quickly about the flashcards. Yeah. Do, you guys, do you guys want the flashcards easier? Yeah. You know what would be really great is if you could change the tempo so that they could go to the slower tempo first, and then as they master it, they can go a little quicker. Just because, yeah, exactly. Sometimes. Yeah. Oh, so shorter, shorter or slower. Or just a little slower. Just, a little slower. I think 
All right, great. So now we get to the Sasser, which is uh, more of what we want to talk about, especially some new things that uh, we've done to improve this. So first point, I think this is just important, is that new those people who first, when we're doing item analysis, we want to determine whether a piece, what bucket a piece sits at. We have to use of, well, it means that for whatever level we're at, so you see the one, 200 to, to 1,000, so that'd be like a 10A final score, and there's not a, a difference in those, those buckets. So those buckets are evenly spaced. Uh, 16A to a 16B is proportionally that much harder than a 1A to 1B. And that's really important, that it just is distributed evenly. And that's what that shows. But this is also derived off our exercises. And you almost see a perfect linear relationship, showing that every piece that they take, um, well, or those exercises that they take, by far, um, are highly predictive of what bucket they're in. If those pieces, for example, had to be moved again, were in the same direction we expected they needed to be moved. If you guys have come across some. Um, yeah. Can you just explain, so once they have a score, then what exactly does that tell you the teacher's score? Like, I guess that would be the, that wouldn't be like their mental 